We are now just one month away from the start of hurricane season in the Atlantic Basin and just over two weeks away from the start in the Eastern Pacific. This is a look at the timeline of how many storms we typically see throughout the hurricane season and the taller that the bar gets. That's the more frequency that we see or the more number of storms that we've seen over times over a 100 year period. So the season starts June 1st. It's actually not unusual for us to see a storm before June 1st. We have seen over the last decade about a handful of storms that have happened before the official start of hurricane season. But activity really starts to ramp up closer to that September 10th peak of hurricane season. So between August, September and October, we see more tropical cyclones on average, but the season keeps going. We do not see the end of hurricane season officially until November 30th. So that's a look at the tropical timeline in yellow. That's the number of hurricanes and in red. That's all tropical cyclones. So tropical storms and hurricanes with hurricane winds being at least 74 miles per hour or greater and tropical storms being at least 39 up to 74 miles per hour. All right. Storm names, here they are. There's actually only one of these names that is new for this year, replaced from six years ago back in 2019. That was Dorian. So the new storm name there is Dexter, but all the rest of these names, Andrea, Barry, Chantal, we have had these before, and you may recognize some of those names because some of these have impacted places over the last uh, times that they've been cycled through. All right, this year the Hurricane Center is making some updates and I've actually got a web article on 11light.com so you can read a lot more about these, but I've listed some of the updates that they're going to do to the products that they're issuing for these named systems. Number one, the cones of uncertainty. These now include inland tropical storm watches, tropical storm warnings, hurricane watches and warnings, but in addition to that, like they had last year, this year, they're going to overlay on top of each other when some places have, say, a tropical storm warning and a hurricane watch. They'll put both of those colors on the map to designate that conditions could reach hurricane conditions, but will definitely reach tropical storm conditions. Rip currents, that's a new map that's gonna be out this year, overlaid with where the position of those cyclones are. Many people don't realize this, but even if we have a storm that is all the way out east of Bermuda, if it's large enough, it's going to churn up the swells and rip currents can be very dangerous. So we'll have a threat map out that's going to show where those rip current threats are going to be greatest as tropical cyclones move through the Gulf and also through the Atlantic. Potential tropical cyclones, you've heard of those the last couple of years. Those have typically been issued up to 48 hours before the arrival time of one of those tropical storms or hurricanes, but now they're going to be issued 72 hours in advance. So if they know this thing could become a hurricane and that's going to meet impacts, they're going to issue that cone of uncertainty, put out a potential tropical cyclone path earlier. That helps decision makers and folks who need to decide, am I going to evacuate? Am I going to board up my home? All of that. And with that being said, they'll also issue those wind radii showing the wind field of these storms now up to three days out. And those cones of uncertainty that they issue get a little bit smaller each year as their forecasts get more accurate. Now, NOAA doesn't officially issue its hurricane outlook for the season until later this month, but Colorado State University did last month in April, and they're calling for a slightly more than average activity in the Atlantic. 17 named storms, nine of those becoming hurricanes and four becoming major hurricanes. That's a little bit above these numbers, which are the average, the climatological averages over that 30 year period from 1991 to 2020. Colorado State University also just puts out these forecasts for major hurricane strikes. So what are the odds we're going to see a major hurricane strike anywhere in the United States? Well, they're saying there's a greater than 50% chance, a 51% chance there could be a major hurricane landfall, 25% chance that that could happen on the East Coast and a 33% chance of a Gulf Coast major hurricane strike with the Gulf Coast being anywhere from Brownsville, Texas, all the way around to the Florida Keys. Okay, why? Why are they calling for that slightly higher than average activity? Well, a lot of this has to do with ocean temperatures in the Atlantic Basin, but it also has to do with what phase of the El Nino Southern Oscillation we're in. This is one of those things that sounds very abstract, but let me kind of lay this out for you. We look at, for El Nino, what's happening with the ocean waters near the equator in the eastern Pacific Ocean in this blue box area. When they're warmer than average, we have an El Nino. When they're cooler than average, we have a La Nina. And when they're near normal, it's called Enso Neutral. And we're coming out of a La Nina. We're now in Enso Neutral conditions. 
And so that means that we're not going to have this pendulum swing of one way or the other of wind shear. When we have La Nina conditions, we see less wind shear. When we have El Nino conditions, we see more wind shear. And that wind shear can be a major disruptor to tropical cyclone formation, might not allow tropical cyclones, tropical storms and hurricanes to form in the first place, or tropical storms and hurricanes to get stronger. That's because wind shear, this is changing of wind speed or wind direction with height, can disrupt storm flow in tropical storms and in hurricanes. So that can inhibit them getting stronger or forming in the first place. So I know I showed you a lot of data. What you really need to take away is we're one week from the start, but every year is different and it only takes one storm to make it a bad year. Last year for us, that storm was Helene. Devastating flooding in Atlanta, East Georgia, significant winds, and we saw inland hurricanes. And those are the three major threats that we see from landfalling tropical systems here in Georgia.